In most post-apocalyptic pieces of fiction, fans are invited to place themselves into the protagonist's shoes, and it's fair to say that many believe they would survive and be just peachy, even though most of us would probably be dead before we even knew an apocalypse was happening. The Walking Dead, however, leaves no one under such illusion. It was a series almost completely built off the idea that no one was safe, and the fact it's continued to shock readers at nearly 200 issues long is no easy feat. It's what cemented the comic as being such an iconic part of the industry landscape for over a decade now. And whether it was deaths, amputations, or twisted storylines, writer Robert Kirkman constantly found ways to terrorize readers. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and this is The Walking Dead, the 12 most shocking comics moments. Number 12, Carl Loses an Eye. While most characters are shown to be expendable in The Walking Dead, there is a core group that you fool yourself into believing are actually safe. Carl was one of them, and when he was shot in the chaos of walkers invading Alexandria, fans were left on tender hooks wondering if Kirkman's evil world had finally taken Rick's son. Carl does survive though, and just like his father, is left irrevocably changed by losing his eye. Kirkman does such a fantastic job of creating moments that permanently alter his narratives and characters, and shows Ian Grit to follow through with his decisions, regardless of what narrative difficulties they may create. Put simply, Kirkman would never do it was all just a dream. Instead, his writing is more like a protracted nightmare where things can and do only get worse, even for the kids. Number 11, Rick's hand is cut off. Up to this point in the story, Rick, much like Jamie Lannister, had been shown to be a capable physical force who could defend himself and his family. However, after his first meeting with the governor, Rick's right hand is cut off in a display of power. The moment happened so fast with so little build-up, and it felt like a complete gut punch once it was over. Because after this, readers faced the prospect of an injured protagonist in a world where he had only survived so far due to his strength and gunplay. This was a terrifying reality for fans who had fallen in love with Rick Grimes, as now it felt like it was only a matter of time till the walkers got him. This was a moment that continued to reverberate through the narrative as Rick had to learn how to survive without his preferred hand, and relearn all the things that once came so easily to him. Number 10, Laurie and Baby Judith's Murder. While she did sleep with Shane and it was always assumed that Rick was dead, Book Laurie was still way more likable than her TV counterpart. And as soon as her husband came back from the dead, she stayed loyal and told Shane in no uncertain terms that their affair was a mistake and it would not continue. This meant that when her death actually came, it left readers despondent, no less because not just Laurie actually died, but also newborn baby Judith along with her. While escaping from the prison, Laurie, clutching baby Judith in her arms was shot through the guts from behind with a shotgun, obliterating baby Judith in the process. It was a shockingly visceral death, and the fact Judith died too felt particularly cruel. Consequently, you can see why this one didn't translate to the small screen. Number 9, The Governor Kisses His Walker Daughter. The governor has always been a pervy, irrevocably twisted sadist. In fact, he was The Walking Dead's first truly evil antagonist. However, he did seemingly have one tie to humanity, as he kept his walker daughter chained up in some sick pseudo-father-daughter relationship fantasy to avoid the reality of his child's death. While this is more sympathetic in the TV show, in the comics this relationship takes on a much more sinister dimension. That's because we find the governor pulling out his walker daughter's teeth, and then he bends down and kisses her open mouth in an unambiguously sexual manner. To compound this, he spits afterwards and mutters about how he will have to get used to the taste. And if that doesn't get your stomach churning, then I guess nothing will. Number 8, Julie and Chris's Suicide Pact. Tyrese enters the comic with his teenage daughter Julie and her boyfriend Chris. The only problem is, Chris apparently read Romeo and Juliet one too many times and decided the only way to be with the love of his life in this apocalyptic hell was via a suicide pact. Despite being pressured into it, Julie agrees with Chris's plan and, after making love for the very first time, the star-crossed lovers drew their pistols. And just like Romeo and Juliet, one lover ends up dead and the other heartbroken, as Chris's gun went off too early and he ends up killing Julie. Even more heartbreaking, Tyrese heard the shot himself and was the first to stumble upon his daughter's dead body. 
He held her in his arms when she came back as a walker, even as she tried to bite his throat out, only for Chris to put the final bullet in Julie's head. Tyrese then snapped, killing Chris and then brutally killing his reanimated corpse. Talk about overkill. Number seven, Ben and Billy's twin murder. In the TV show, the harrowing story between Lizzie and Michael largely plays analogous to the story of twin boys Ben and Billy. In the comics, Ben and Billy are five-year-old twins who witness their mother's death at the hands of walkers, and it leaves them emotionally traumatized. Ben suffers especially deep psychological trauma and begins to exhibit signs of psychopathy. Eventually, he ends up butchering his own twin brother Billy and tells the adults it's okay because everyone comes back. The adults in turn undecided on what they should do with Ben, lock him up in the van overnight. However, while the grown-ups are debating what to do with the murderous child, Carl sneaks into his prison and shoots the young boy at point-blank range. Children killing children is of course horrifying, and watching little Carl take it upon himself to execute a five-year-old to protect the rest of the camp is indeed sickening. Number six, heads on fences. Dressed in the skins of walkers and denying their human attributes, the Whisperers are a terrifying image of where humanity might end up in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Twisted leader Alpha shows just how bottomless the well of sadism is when, under the banner of peace, she infiltrates and begins to pick off our survivors one by one. Back at the Whisperer camp, she meets Rick and goes for a nice little stroll with him to discuss terms of their peace treaty. Here, she makes it clear that if the people of Alexandria stay on their side of the territory, then her people will stay out of theirs. It sounds like a perfectly reasonable offer, at least so far. Of course, you might be thinking by now, just how can Alpha mark the borders? Well, it turns out, with the heads of Rick's good pals. The people that Alpha took from Rick's camp had been slaughtered, and their heads were now stuck on sticks along the border, including the pregnant Rosita and longtime fan favorite Ezekiel. Number five, Dale gets eaten. Dale was probably too good to survive in this horrific zombie world, but that did not make his death any less shocking. Again, this moment was so horrifying because it plumbed new depths of depravity for a series that was only really getting started. What happens here is that Dale was captured by a group of humans and then woke up to the smell of delicious meat. His own meat, in fact. The people who captured him turned out to be cannibals and had chopped off Dale's one remaining leg and nonchalantly ate it right in front of him, with the plan being to keep him alive for as long as possible and dissect pieces of him to eat. There is a delicious, delicious kicker to this though, as Dale was actually bitten and infected prior to being kidnapped. This is a point that he takes great pleasure in after waking up, telling the cannibals that they feasted on tainted meat. You're eating tainted meat. Number four, Rick's vengeance. Rick Grimes strayed the line between hero and villain many times throughout the series, but most of the time he had just enough of a shred of morality left to keep him on the heroic side of that line. I say most of the time because his vengeance for the murder of Dale might have been the first time we saw Rick stray just too far across the moral boundaries. This is because after Dale became dinner, Rick swears bloody revenge. He finds the pathetic ragtag group known as the Hunters who killed him and afterwards are exchanged and bullets are fired, our hero Rick Grimes tortures the Hunters all night long. Number three, Herschel's beheaded twins. A major difference between comic Herschel and TV Herschel is that the former has way more children, including twin girls Rachel and Susie. Once they reach the prison though, this family starts to crumble. Realizing he hasn't seen his twins for a while, Herschel goes out looking for them. And that's when he stumbles upon their decapitated bodies. In shock, Herschel and Maggie, who arrived shortly after him, watches the dead girls' heads reanimate and have to be put down by Glenn. It turns out one of the inmates in the prison already turned out to be a complete psychopathic serial killer obsessed with decapitating people, and had murdered the two girls and planned to keep going for the rest of the survivors. Just the visual of two sweet innocent girls beheaded would have been shocking enough, but this was also the first time that the survivors had come across human savagery. Number two, Sebastian kills Rick. It was the question that raged for years, just who would kill Rick Grimes? Negan, Alpha, the governor, or one of the other dozen or so villains Rick Grimes had tangled with over the years could have achieved it. But in the end, it was a snot-nosed brat called Sebastian who petulantly killed Rick for ruining the comfort and ease he had been enjoying in the Commonwealth. He was, as mentioned, a completely spoiled brat who bullied and threw tantrums and reveled in the power his mother wielded. 
That all changed, of course, when Rick arrived and eventually dethroned Pamela as leader, thereby spoiling everything for Sebastian. The kid then broke into Rick's home and, after confronting him for ruining his life, shot Rick point blank in the chest. To say this was shocking, well, it would have been an understatement. After everything Rick had survived and how close he had come to seeing democracy and peace thrive, his life was ended in such a throwaway, ugly manner. Number one, Carl's happily ever after. The Walking Dead comics have finally drawn to a close and they ended in what might be the most shocking way the story could have with a happy ending. In the final pages, Carl is all grown up and has a daughter of his own. The walkers still exist, but are no longer a real threat to civilization. Democracy and order are in place, and the world has begun to move on. There's even a statue of Rick erected in the town square. In fact, the whole thing wraps up with Carl taking his daughter, named Andrea after his beloved stepmother, and reading her a bedtime story about the trials Rick Grimes faced in bringing peace and love back to the world. After all the horror, depravity, and wickedness of The Walking Dead, there are few who would have thought that the comic would end with such a touching, heartfelt moment in which one of our main heroes had found long-lasting peace and hope. In the world of this comic, what could have been more shocking than that? So this has been our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What are the most disturbing, shocking moments in The Walking Dead? And have I missed any off here? Also, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.